Imagine that the very ground beneath your feet was at risk of washing away, that the industry your whole community was built on was struggling to survive, that the traditions your culture has employed for centuries simply couldn't be continued. But this isn't the stuff of nightmares. This is reality for communities around the world. The ocean is 30% more acidic than it was 200 years ago, and it is acidifying faster than at any time in Earth's history. When I learned of this, I was shocked and captivated. Ocean acidification caused by carbon dioxide emissions is a global problem. And so, to better understand it, I took a global journey. For one year, I traveled on a Thomas J. Watson Fellowship, living and working with marine-dependent communities in Norway, Hong Kong, Thailand, New Zealand, the Cook Islands, and Peru. I saw just how far-reaching ocean acidification's impacts could be, and just how much work we have to do to help vulnerable communities understand and respond to ocean acidification. Though ocean acidification occurs in the water, its potential impacts stretch far onto land. Around the world, whole economies and cultures are built on threatened resources, such as shellfish and coral. These organisms build their shells and skeletons out of a chalk-like substance called calcium carbonate. Ocean acidification decreases the amount of calcium carbonate in the water, making it difficult or impossible for shellfish and coral to grow their bones and shells. In Satura, a town in the far north of Peru, scallops dominate. From divers who spend seven hours a day underwater, to artists who sew shells into lamps, to hotel and restaurant owners who benefit from the foot traffic brought by scallops, everyone has a stake in the industry. And this huge diversity of job opportunities brought by scallops brings opportunities and benefits to everyone in the region. You can find the impacts of shellfish even in the places you least suspect it. I met this man, selling fruit and vegetables in the market with his family in Satura. When I asked him what he thought about the value of scallops to Satura, he said to me, Si no hay conchos en Satura, no hay nada. If there are no scallops in Satura, there is nothing. In Aitutaki, in the Cook Islands, the whole island is vulnerable to ocean acidification. This beautiful island and its stunning lagoon is protected by a coral reef. Powerful ocean waves break on the edges of the reef, leaving the shores of Aitutaki still and calm. Coral lines the beaches, and over time, that coral becomes the fine sand that thousands of tourists run their fingers through every year. An officer in their Ministry of Tourism told me that tourism accounts for 95% of their GDP. But this is about more than just the tourism industry. This is about their home. If the coral protecting Aitutaki is damaged by ocean acidification or other pressures, the whole island is at risk. And then there are the things you can't measure. The things that don't come down to a dollar value or even a job. All around the world, fishing communities took immense pride in their seafaring heritage and seafood consumption. In Peru, I watched as villages celebrated El Dia de Pescadores, or the Day of Fishermen. In New Zealand, people of both indigenous Māori and Western descent told me of how their identity depended on the availability of seafood, especially shellfish. If you take the sustenance, their, their culture away, because it's not just the form of food, it's who they are. Mm -hmm. It's part of who that people is, then it affects those past and those ahead. Mm. One of the provincial slogans of Thailand's Serat Thani is Hoi Yai, or huge oyster. 
The oyster farmers there spoke with such pride about the quality of their product and what it meant to their region. Shellfish farmers around the world are having trouble. In New Zealand, mussel and oyster farmers have seen inconsistent or disappearing supplies of wild seed. In the United States, the oyster industry in my home state, Washington, faced 80% mortality in their hatcheries. Scientists and industry members teamed up and found that ocean acidification was the cause of their troubles. First on the west coast, and more recently on the east coast, hatcheries have found a way to keep their businesses afloat. Through complex monitoring and adaptation systems, hatchery managers can change the chemistry of the water flowing into their hatcheries and keep their oysters healthy. But these solutions aren't available in most parts of the world, and they won't work everywhere. Right now, the only way we know how to fight ocean acidification is in a controlled environment, a hatchery. But what about in Thailand or Peru, where there are few or no hatcheries? How can this shellfish farmer, who hand dredges the mudflats of Bandung Bay, Thailand, in the middle of the night, how can he fight ocean acidification? And what about the coral of Aitutaki? How can we stop ocean acidification from degrading this crucial reef system? The only way to truly stop ocean acidification is to curb global CO2 emissions. But while we work towards a carbon-free energy economy, we must work with the marine-dependent communities that have everything on the line. There are things we can do to better understand and respond to ocean acidification. These include building monitoring systems to help us understand current ocean conditions in key seafood producing regions, as well as conducting further studies on how ecologically and economically important species might be affected. In the United States, Washington, Maryland, and Maine have taken action, bringing industry and science together to address ocean acidification. This is an excellent start, but we need to do more. Of all the people I met, one man stays in my mind. Pedro, who has been farming scallops in Peru for 30 years, spoke with passion. Pero te voy a decir algo. Pese a eso, aún persisto en hacer lo mismo. Quiero hacer esto. ¿Y sabes por qué? ¿Sabes por qué? Porque no tenemos otro camino. No tenemos otra salida. There is no other way. There is no other choice. This is our ocean. Let's work together to save it.